So HCG, um, it is used alongside TRT. It's also used for fertility, pre-IVF and things like that. Keep watching. So we're back and we are discussing HCG. So HCG is used obviously with TRT alongside it with some men. Uh, in my experience and what we see in the clinics, HCG tends to be, although there's a lot of people preaching that it's a must or not, I, have, I and we have found that usually dosage and things like that, it can be personal in terms of how it makes you feel. You might need to try different things. Some guys don't get on with it. Some guys, I know like Nelson, he mentions it, it massively improves sex drive and libido. But um, and we know there's certain levels that show in the evidence for fertility maintenance. But we've got Nelson Virgil and, and George, Dr. George Tuliatos here today. So we're just going to discuss this and see what you guys think. So I have a very strong bias for HCG uh, that goes beyond the data. OK, so that's that's when I say bias. Um, ACG um, has become obviously very popular in the States in, May, I would say, the last four years or so. Before that, I've been on testosterone for 34, 35 years. And out of those 30-something, 28 maybe, I wasn't on ACG. I was on testosterone alone. Did I feel okay? Yeah, I felt fine. Uh, my testicles shrank. Obviously, I'm not looking. I'm a gay man. I'm not looking to have babies with a woman. So I wasn't concerned about fertility. Uh, yeah, the, sp the sperm volume decreases on testosterone alone. That's a big uh, difference. Your testicular size uh, decreases. And if you have big testicles to start with, maybe that's not a big issue. You have smaller testicles before you start testosterone. Obviously, you're going to see a bigger change. Um, there's some guys that actually the testicular atrophy gets so bad, uh, and I'm not talking about months, I'm talking about years of exposure, that when they're having sex, their testicles recede into their bodies. So very, very few people discuss that on the internet. And, and that, when that happens, uh, it hurts sometimes to have sex. Um, so that's one other issue. So it's not only a cosmetic issue, like some doctors think, oh, you know, get used to your smaller testicles. No, there are some physiological and pain-related issues when they recede um, because of their size into your body while you're having an erection. So I'm just being blunt. But um, the first thing I noticed, and obviously I had been doing testosterone for a while. So once again, I'm not a normal um, person that started with HCG. My sex drive definitely went up dramatically. And it's uh, the first week. It's not like you have to wait for a while. No, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it won't work within a week or two weeks, you'll know it. Some, for some guys it works. I, I have clients that I do coaching with, they don't feel a thing, okay? Even with the, the right dose. The question about the right dose is, is highly controversial. It's a, one of the most discussed topics on excelmail.com and my Facebook groups. Uh, we have good data, but small, small studies that have were done here in Houston, uh, Baylor College of Medicine with Dr. Lip Schultz, a personal friend of mine. He actually, uh, we had studies on fertility on the use of HCG with FSH, HMB, uh, studies using HCG with testosterone replacement, um, only probably two or three, they're all small. The data that Lipschultz uh, collected, um, he gave uh, men that were already on testosterone, either injections or gels, not, not one, but several types of testosterone replacements. He gave them 500 uh, IUs, units of HCG every other day, three times a week. And for 66%, two thirds of those men, this combo improved sperm counts, quality, all that. So then they became more fertile. He doesn't have any fertility data when it comes to uh, pregnancy rates or all that stuff for their, their female partners. So we know a third of the guys uh, on the combo, their sperm didn't really, sperm count didn't improve as, as being, being really normalized. So there, it doesn't work for everybody, okay? Well, it's also uh, in every study, like I tell people, because I used to be in research groups, it's also hard to measure adherence or compliance, who was actually injecting this thing, following the rules at home. Because obviously these are studies that are trusting the word of, of the 
person that you're asking, hey, do you inject three times a week? But anyways, so that's good. The libido question, the actual increasing, not a single study. And I'm trying to push Dr. Lifshultz to do a second study to not only see, you know, look at sperm count and all that, but also look at libidos. Just bringing HCG increased my sex drive. So much so that I still use it if I forget. And once again, I'm not the best at compliance. I'm good at preaching to the crowd. Sometimes my partner says, you should follow your own advice. Sometimes I forget. And when I forget, I realize, hey, I haven't thought about sex for a few days or even my own, you know, masturbation. So I do see it black and white. So I have biases. Some guys hate HCG. Some guys think that water retention increases, obviously, because it is an androgen. It enhances acne, acne, something, something. acne uh, hemirocrate increases more. So yeah, everything that testosterone causes, HCG will probably enhance it. The good, in my case, the good, obviously I don't have acne. I don't have, uh, you know, the, you know, what else did I say? Yeah. You know, I don't have all the other stuff that most people complain. They it's complain much- about what, water retention and they think it's extra viral. Oh, my estrogen, SCG increases estrogen. It increases estrogen. Some data shows that it stabilizes all the time. But anyways, so um, 500 I use every other day is the only studied protocol by a research group, a small setting. I think there were like 100 patients uh, in the world. Okay, so there's not a definite answer on what the right dose. We know that that dose, if everybody was really honest about the fact that they injected, only worked in 66%. It didn't work, 33% it didn't work. What were the factors? Older age and longer exposure to testosterone. So the guys that were on testosterone for the longest, they were older, they didn't have as good of a boost in sperm count. Dr. Lipschultz never asked the question, are your testicles bigger? Okay, even though he actually measures testicular size. So that's another thing that has to, there's some data that it may actually, we all know when we use it, that it increases. My concern right now, and I'm gonna go right to what I'm concerned about, um, because of the fear of all the side effects, fear of the estrogen. People are using suboptimal doses. They're using low doses of 100 I use every day or twice a week. We have seen there's another study that actually measured with the Lipschultz protocol, because Lipschultz actually took his data from another study that actually gave the man on testosterone, uh, 500 IUs, and they measure something called 17 hydroxy progesterone. It's a um, hormone in the cascade, you know, now that we start with cholesterol and it goes all the way down to testosterone. Actually, the, the final ending of, of the cascade is estradiol and DHT, which are probably the most important factors, more so than testosterone, but that's another topic. They gave them and they measured 17 OH progesterone. Why? They could have measured sperm count, but sperm count takes at least three months to really get to the point after you start HCG to see the results. 17 OH progesterone is is linked, is is correlated strongly with something called intratestricular testosterone. What, and that's something I learned right in the book. There's testosterone in the blood. So we say, okay, I got enough testosterone. But in the testicles, when you're on TRT alone, it's actually low. Your intratestricular testosterone inside the testicle is low. It doesn't match the one around the, obviously, testicles and blood. And we need intratestricular testosterone to produce sperm, okay? And why is that happening? Why is the blood not increasing? That was always an my question. I guess it's, it shuts off the LH. It shuts off the LH. The, the, the LH. LH. Yes. LH is really the generator. So they have seen that HCG, because it looks like LH, it's an LH mimicker, increases intratestricular testosterone, increases 17-OH progesterone, which is a test I sell in the standard labs to predict response of sperm count. So, so there's another hypothesis, and I really believe Dr. Chrysler or Chrysler or however you want to, was one of the first that brought that up. And I was like, hmm, because we, we had a lot of disagreements. But this one really hit my curiosity. So LH, we need LH. And LH and FSH are suppressed through TRT. And we're suppressed forever. I was suppressed for 34, the, what, 27 years or so. Um, and there are consequences of that. Consequences is that cells inside the testicles, the lady cells, don't die, but they tend to shrink off. 
you know, and they become kind of dormant. They're not producing sperm. They're obviously, there's not enough testicular, um, uh, intratesticular testosterone. So HCG tends to wake them up, right? But HCG, now we're seeing data for the first time, actually um, two months ago, that it increases also the upstream cascade hormones that are all shut down. Many the steredogenesis. Yeah. So there's all effects that we'll see later in other studies, I'm sure. The HCG is not only about testicular size, sperm count, but there may be some uh, neurosteroids, uh, you know, like George has mentioned this, that are improved in the cascade that may have- progesterone, and dehydroepiandrosterone. All those that have actually uh, brain and cognitive effects. So I guess I HCG is much more than fertility or aesthetic. It's also yeah. having a better steroidal profile as, as a whole, you know? Yeah, and, and, and I feel my booty is actually better on, on HCG. I just, you know, I'm, I'm a data guy and, and I hate, you know, because there are a lot of uh, people online talking about all kinds of stuff, but I tend to see, hey, is, is there a study to this? There are no studies that link HCG to libido, HCG to cognitive function, HCG, only one study, and it's well done study that was just published that actually so increases in, in, in progesterone, pregnenolone, a uh, little bit of DHEA with a use of HCG. HCG, in my point of view, somebody, somebody asked me, is that a must? No, I mean, I, I was without HCG on testosterone for 20 some years. I don't think, I, well, looking back, I don't know. I, I don't think it, you know, it killed me not to have HCG, but had I, if I had the choice today, let's say today I'm 22, 23, you have low testosterone. Somebody asked me, well, first of all, you wanna have kids. Second of all, you, you, <laughs> do you want to preserve your testicular size? And there's this thing that may enhance the effects of testosterone. I would say yes. So I don't think it's a must. HCG is not part of any testosterone guidelines. None of the guideline groups even mention it, okay? Right. HCG in the United States is usually obtained through clinics that do not take insurance because insurance usually does not want to pay for HCG in the United States. We have some other issues with HCG supply in the United States. With the 17 hydroxy progesterone, right? That's the one. Yeah. Uh, we, we test that on our tests. And I have to say, there have been two guys that came through um, who'd actually, from, from somewhere in Europe, been on for fertility pre-IVF. They'd, they'd been given like 5,000 IUs twice a week, you know? And felt awful, to be fair, but it did the job of the sperm kind. I think it was something like that. That sort of dose it was definitely up there. And but they their progesterone levels were through the roof. The only two guys I've seen that those levels were really, really high. Maybe with those sort of high doses, is maybe that was contributing to why they felt so rough. But yeah, I I hadn't heard that before. But that that correlates in these two sort of case studies, as it were. I mean, the HCG thing. I, I suppose one. I wonder whether yes, if there's if there's the LH. You know, as as Dr. Crisley used to say, backfilling the pathways and the steroidogenesis of those other hormones. I, I wonder whether because there is the absolute where people like Nelson feel awesome and you get the improvement in libido, and then you, there's guys that literally like I don't want to touch this ever again. This made me feel so bad. Yeah. Some guys have had weird like autoimmune type responses to it, maybe because it's human sourced. I don't know. You know, the the, the human. You know, it's pregnant women's urine essentially, isn't it? Where they where they source it from. But I wonder whether in future, if we see those studies and, and they see that and, and whether it, rather than a mimetic, you know, because obviously it, it acts like H uh, like LH predominantly, but isn't LH. I wonder whether, you know, using recombinant LH or something like that or something else that filled that pathway that could avoid some of the, the feelings that some of the guys get when they feel terrible could provide something similar. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. Well, the that's a good hypothesis, it's just not very practical because recombinant LH is not only expensive, but the half-life is very short. HCG has something that LH doesn't have, a longer half-life, actually, um, well, it peaks twice in two and a yeah, half seconds. Two, two peaks, isn't um, it? And actually, it's something that very few people talk about. There are some qualities to that molecule that also has FSH-like qualities, which we've only We've always linked FSH to sperm production and not really LH much. LH usually we link it to testosterone production. So HCG is more uh, versatile than LH, has a higher, and it's cheaper because you're extracting it. And that's something that some guys probably don't know from pregnant women's urine. I mean, women 
produce a lot of HCG through their pregnancy. And um, I, I don't ask me how they do that. I mean, most probably not being in the United States, but they collect all this volume of yeah. urine and extract it. So because compounding, and we have really strong compounding in as well, not as strong as it used to be, they're trying to shut them down. Um, um, my, my, one of my best friends is an owner. And he says, oh, to make LH, we would have to sell uh, recombinant. We would have to sell it by, for $400, $500 a vial instead of uh, $80 a vial that we send you. So there are practical aspects. However, I have to say Morgan Taller, who George really likes Dr. Morgan Taller, in his, one of his papers written last year, threw like a, uh, like a piece of gold at the end of the paper saying that they're working on a, on a long-acting HCG, uh, come, uh, which can be done because a lot of peptides are being uh, produced now with nanotechnology on long-acting formulations. Hmm. So I was, I contacted him. He didn't want to answer. Obviously, there's probably patent issues, but that's, I guess, that's coming too. Uh, why uh, long acting? Why in particular long acting? To hmm? be more, uh, why in particular long acting? So that you inject once a week instead okay. of every other, you know, every other day, or you know, for things of that nature. Um, there is a common belief among bodybuilding community that when you blast, of course, in testosterone, and then you hit a plateau in sex drive, you have to introduce HCG. And this is what Jay Cutler also said when he arrived in Greece, that if you have libido issues, even though you're blasting one gram of testosterone, usually a little bit of HCG for intratesticular testosterone, you know? Hey, something hey, too. You know, bodybuilders were always right. And it's the pro science, but sometimes it, yeah. it's, it's ahead, you know? <laughs> yeah. Am I a more effective brain, my brain function on HCG than I was before? I have to say like last decade, it has been the most productive of my life. Uh, yeah, I'm getting older, I'm 61, but I always question if I had started HCG 34 years ago, would have my brain capacity even been even better? So all these questions that we have no answers because nobody's looking into them, nobody's doing the studies. They, Michael uh, Scali was in front of HCG very much. Yeah, Michael Scali was doing a lot of work, but you know, obviously he's not practicing, but Baylor College of Medicine by, led by Dr. Lipschultz, I would say is the number one uh, research team in the country looking at testosterone, uh, HCG, because they have uh, usually like 20 fellows every year going through because they're medical students coming and all those fellows have to write papers. It says, hey, let's look deeply into the effect of HCG in mood, in cognitive, in sexual function, so we've covered some good topics there on HCG. It, it, every, it is so unique. You, everyone's got to figure out what works for them TRT-wise. HCG may give you awesome benefits. It may make you feel awful. It may make you get one of those two, but you're doing it for fertility anyway, so you're going to stick it out until you, you get the job done, as it were. Um, do you think that's a fair summary? I mean, I, I know there's like we talk about the benefits and things, but when it boils down to treating patients, it's just it's so unique, right? I mean, I, you know, I HCG for me, it can give me a little bit of acne, whatever I do with the testosterone, dosing and changing it around and things, lowering the dose. Um, but I'll stick it out for fertility, you know, and probably I may or may not take it, but it could go either way with each patient, I think. So thanks for, for joining us guys today. Um, it's been really helpful. And if you guys like these videos, please like, subscribe, uh, ring the notification bell and comment underneath if you've got questions or, or you'd like to uh, uh, to get involved so yeah thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon